You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. Word of warning, right off the bat. If you've seen the trailers for Black Widow, it's not the movie that you're going to get. I'm telling you, if you're going into Black Widow expecting a fun Red Sparrow, Jack Wick, John Wick, whatever, romp. No, that is not this movie. Eric, how the hell are you doing? Well, no one's expecting that, Jordan. Everyone's expecting a Marvel movie. You have a Marvel movie. I'm excited to talk about Black Widow scar- starring Scarlett Johansson. Scarring Sterling <laughs> Johansson. We're both doing it tonight. We're both fucking up. Yeah, we're, we'll be okay. It's going to be a fun talk. But, I mean, this was confusing because this is a movie uh, about a dead person. Right. Allegedly. Black Widow is already dead. No, she's she's dead. Black Widow was killed off in Endgame as a sacrifice for the Spirit Stone or Soul Stone or whatever the hell for the Infinity Gauntlet. Uh, She sacrificed herself. And so this movie already we know as a prequel. Mm Mm-hmm. We knew that going into it. I knew this was going to be a prequel. I was expecting Red Sparrow, the Jennifer Lawrence movie. Sure. I I was literally expecting Red Sparrow. I was expecting espionage. I was expecting Russian spy, James Bond, if you will. Uh, That's not what I got. And um, I'm not necessarily – I don't necessarily hate what I got. No, I – I was, ex- you know what? My expectations were low for this movie. Mm-hmm. I I don't like Black Widow as a character in the Avengers. Um, it's nothing against Scar- Scarlett Johansson. It's just like, you know what I mean? It's like we have, I don't know, Thor, Iron Man, Captain America, and Black Widow. You know, it's, she's she is on the bottom of the the tier list. I don't know why she's on on the team, but this movie really did show us that. The Black Widows, the organization of uh, Lady Assassins, who were... Are they Russian? Uh, yeah, they were Russian. You know, or whatever their, their accent was, is a threat to uh, be shown, be, be taken with caution in the Marvel Universe. Well, see, now, I would disagree with you, because I've never been a Black Widow fan, really. Mm-hmm. But she's been around since Iron Man 2. So, I mean, she has – I mean, she's one of the OGs here at this point. I mean, it's about time she gets her own movie. I I, I, I feel this movie came out too late. This movie definitely should have come out in between Infinity War and Endgame, maybe. Uh, just to kind of – you know, so we don't know. Oh, Yes, well, but you know what? This movie is just like Captain Marvel where – because it happened in the past, it can be kind of slated anywhere in there and used as a great vehicle. One, to give actors more screen time and more, you know, uh, promo, more more merch with, with everything in their character and world building. That's great. But also as an introduction to new characters, which we got in this movie. Yes, we did get a lot of it. Do we want to talk about personally before we get into it? What's been going on in the news recently with Scarlett Johansson? Or are we just going to forget about that and talk about the movie? We'll Your call. Get, we'll, we'll do it, save it towards the end because other actors are actually doing the same if you saw that too. No, I did not see that. Really? Other actors are doing it? Uh, not for uh, – yeah, I think um, – well, again, we're going to get into it. and uh, I'll, Let me pull up the, the articles before we get into that. Wow. Uh, before we get into that. But yeah, I think like Gerard Butler is, is one. Anyway. Gerard Butler, he's in this movie? No, 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 for four other movies because. Oh, other damn it. actors and other movies. I got you. I got you. Okay, I got you. Yeah, oh, yeah. For the reason that that she's doing. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, uh, how this movie started was a very young Black Widow and her sister in the playground of Ohio. Jordan, look all the. Do yes. you recognize anything over there? No, it was it was it was it was it was that was straight bullshit. But right off the bat, okay, Gina and I sit down. We pay the thirty dollar fee for no reason to watch this, but we do it for the show. And I, I, I am not interested, Eric. 
not interested at all. I do not care. I, I, I do not want to watch this movie. I do not care. Sure. And it's like, oh, my God, a two two hour and 15 minute runtime. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, am I going to get through this? Um, so anyway, start the movie out and boom, I get Hopper from Stranger Things. And I'm just like, hey, I like him. So I'm interested. I love this opening. This is really good. Blue hair, uh, Black Widow, her, her blonde sister. Richard Wise coming in from the Mummy franchise coming yeah. in here. I was like, is that Richard Wise? Like, that hey, was, what's up, Rachel? That's what I said, too. That was a pretty dope. Yeah, I yeah, was like, I, cool. I like that. Uh, non-bearded Hopper from Stranger Things. I love the house. Love the setup. Anyway, setup is girls are playing, moms cooking food, whatever. Dad comes home, takes a drink like all of us dads does. And then he goes to the wife, hey, we got an hour. We got to go. And it's like, why do we got to go? What's 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 going on? And not, I'm not saying that's the wife that's the saying. That's that's Jordan saying that. Why do we got to go, Hopper? And it's like packs everything up. No, forget this. No, forget this. And boom, we're on the lam. I am, I am, I am bought hook, line, and sinker at this point. What is going to happen? Because I don't like origin stories, Eric. And right now, at this point, before the airplane sequence, this is really, really interesting. Do you agree or disagree? No, I agree. I, I didn't know what was happening. And the more I watch, the more they give you a little bit more. Like, for example, Lexi, uh, played by David Harbour, uh, has, gave us a little sneak peeks of his super strength. It's like, right. oh, oh, wait a minute. He just flipped that thing over. It's like, oh, wait a minute. He just ran down that, that airplane and was able to hold on to it the entire time. He's doing all this, this crazy shit. Like, oh, okay. We got uh, another super soldier here. Another super soldier. Blah. But did you catch when they were in the airfield and they were getting ready to go and they have the nice plane chase, did you see that it was S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, on mm -hmm. the actual markings of the SUV? I was like, oh, that's cool because everybody knows right now that Hydra has infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D., but we don't know that back then in 1994, 95? Right. taking place? Right. And they are still very much... And they talk about it throughout the movie, how Hydra very much plays a role in pulling the strings in this movie for a lot of... Um, whether it be S.H.I.E.L.D. or through the... Um, what the hell is that guy's name? The Samuel Jackson, Nick Fury? Drakoff? Drakoff? Oh, Drakoff, yeah. For Drake his off. his little organization as well, too. Everyone seems to be all in cahoots with each other. Now, this wouldn't be typical Movie Guys podcast if I don't pray something and knock something but at the same time. Um, this movie kind of feels standalone-ish. And what I mean by that is no other returning players in the MCU come into this movie. Like, there's no Captain America, no Iron Man, no Nick Fury. Do you think that is – or Agent Coulson? I mean, like, this could have been an easy, stupid cameo that Marvel has done for years of the plane going away, camera turns around 360 or whatever, 180, and, and there's Coulson going, damn it, we lost another one. Like, what I'm trying to say is this movie does not feel traditional MCU. Do you no, that, agree with me at all? I, well – no, that this movie I think very much felt like kind of just traditional uh, MCU. It's it's talk action, talk action, talk talk action action. Little talk, maybe a little bit of crying, bring the family together, and then action action action, and then sprinkle comedy over all of that. Lighthearted, a light sprinkle of comedy over all of that, which we got. There was a lot of fun character moments in here. The chemistry that between all of these actors really seemed to work, like with, with all of them. I, I'm just, you know, with Scarlett, with um, with Florence who played uh, um, uh, Yel what's her Yel Yelena, uh, Black Widow's sister, who's also a Black mm -hmm. Widow, uh, Melina, Rachel Weisz, uh, David Harper, is, they all played well together. I I enjoyed watching all of them together. Okay. And right. well, I, again, I think it. I think it just very much felt like what a typical Marvel movie is. Is it standalone? I agree to that completely. I compared it to, to Captain Marvel just a moment ago, just because it felt like again it, where it's just you know you could just put this movie anywhere because of how on on its own it is. 
Okay. All right. Fine. Fair enough. I mean, I'm, I'm sure we'll talk more about it because, okay. All right. I'm a little shocked by that. Um, we get down to Cuba and we find out that, hey, guess what? He ain't your dad. She ain't your ma. He ain't your sister. Boom. And style, instead of child sex slavery, you're going into the Black Widow group. Boom. Now we get a horrible, horrible, we don't talk about music. But why do they do smells like Teen Spirit like in this way? I don't know. I was disgusted. Yeah. But then I, I I I got over it. But I'm like, okay. But but why? Why do smells like Teen? I mean, like this it's takes place trend. in 1985 in this beginning, right? right. So he might this as well. Is, what? This is the trend. It's I've not said a it. Trend. It, no. It, I, I'm telling you right now, and I can back it up. No. It Go has ahead. been a trend for the last five years or so. Every trailer that has mm-hmm. been coming out from all these big blockbuster studios, the new thing is to have the emo cover of a big song, of a famous song. It happens all the time now. It's become the standard. The new Venom 2 trailer that just came out, you could watch at that one and see the exact same thing. It happens with all of these movies. The Suicide Squad did it as well, too, the first and the second one. It it just is this thing now. I... I hate it just as much as you do. It, it it bothers me. And that's just where it is. I don't know if it's like a rights thing where they that's how they avoid paying the rights because they could just pay the rights to that one person rather than it being the royalties of, of a studio. So maybe it's cheaper. I don't know. I, I mean, like, I mean, do something different. Like, if you're going to do an emo version of, like, an early 90s song. One, when they're little girls in the beginning, this is 95, 96. So why don't you do Cootie and the Blowfish or Alanis Morissette? Why Nirvana at this point? Because it's Kurt Cobain going died. with the feel, man. Because you're already you're taking this this song and making it really slow and having a very breathy voice, making it kind of like suspenseful. I'm Eric, all for the days, what, Eric Jordan. I'm sorry, but Eric, Eric we're 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 agreeing, thing? Jordan. Why are you yelling? I know we're agreeing. I know we're agreeing. But here's the thing that pisses me off: it's fucking smells like Teen Spirit is a nonsense song. You could it use mean any. Anything. You could use any song. You could you could have used Mary Mo in that song. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm like, why pick "Smells Like Teen Spirit"? You have other things. No, "Smells Like Teen Spirit" is a nonsense song. It has no meaning. That's what makes it ironic. That's what makes it a '90s generation song. Like, why? Pick, the song doesn't stand for anything. I, I mean. Why not pick 99 Red Balloons from the late 80s? Like, that would speak Russian, German. I don't know. Like, why? Uh, I, here I, I don't here we are this now. Whole show to be, I, okay, okay, fine. We're here. We're here. I'm sorry. It just doesn't make sense to me, Eric. That's all. It just doesn't make sense, buddy. No, I, I, you're, I'm thank, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you are as heated about this so that I don't have to be. This is stupid. I mean, pick something else that speaks to what we're seeing. I would rather they just do tones, dark, ominous tones like they used to do. Maybe with a lone piano key, you know, something kind of like that, rather than these these covers. These covers really do bother me. Go back no, if, of, of doing it to, to uh, whatever, the rest, uh, you know, like just, just hitting a, a wood block, you know, mm-hmm. like that would work too. I mean, pick pick any song from Smashing Pumpkins from this era. It would be better. Just but don't, anyway, just don't let's even avoid it. Okay, we're talking too much about it. We're, we're talking too much about it. It's stupid, especially a nonsense, ironic song like Smells Like Teen Spirit. Bad choice. All right, back Bad on track choice. here, Jordan. We're talking about so the, the Black, Black Widow here. So Black Widow, now we find out that this movie takes place in between, well, Civil War and Infinity War, right? Because e, yes. this is not this is not before. I mean, yes, it's before Endgame, but this is before Infinity War. <laughs> Civil War just happened. Boom, Scarlet. Uh, Scarlet Black Widow is on uh, on the lamb. She's evading, and then she goes to Norway. She has a little house trailer in the middle of nowhere. That's not a, the best way to hide because who wouldn't look for that? Well, you she gotta, gets hooked you know. up by um, by dude. Uh, Mason, Hand, Handmaid's Tale, dude. Yes, he gets. He just basically just comes through on the Dutch and helps her out whenever he needs to. So, uh, good, good on you there, Deus Ex Masona. 
That's his name, Mason. I made that up. <laughs> I kept on calling him Q, you know, a la James Bond. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically what he what he was. He just kind of came in there. And yeah. well, whatever. He, he's just, you know, someone to look at. And there's a little flirt that, that he and Natasha have. Which I don't believe. I mean, like, he is so friend-zoned, it's... It's crazy, and you know she's watching Moonraker. Which why would you why would you have her watch Moonraker? One of the worst Bonds of all time. But then you know, hey, guess what? Generator dies. We have to go in town to get gas and everything else. And then boom, out of nowhere, explosion. We get our action scene with her against Taskmaster. Now I don't know much about Taskmaster. I know a little bit. Eric, do you know anything about this villain Taskmaster? Oh yeah, at all? Taskmaster's a badass dude. Um, talk talk to me about it. Is this a good interpretation of Taskmaster? Oh, I don't yeah. know anything about it. I I was happy with this. This reminded me a bit of GI Joe, to be honest with you. With uh, what's his name, um, Snake Eyes, or okay, um, you know what I mean. Just kind of like this. Um, this rando is, kind of ninja that what that's around. Taskmaster is in the comics? No, no, no. Uh, Taskmaster is a former agent of Shield, actually. Tony Masters, um, and yeah, it's it's not like he's a uh, horribly like in depth character. You know, he's got like a whole lot of backstory. He's just a cool. You know, he's this character. It doesn't matter because we're getting a reinterpretation of it in this universe. They're basically able to just copy anything that they see from the first time seeing it. Taz that Master. is the That's original. Is. Yeah, okay. and and obviously hyper intelligent as well. Um, you know, very very resourceful in what they can do and what they, you know, kind of like not a hero but like not a villain. If if that makes sense. That's the original Taskmaster. So they're not like so they're not Commando, Snake Eyes, uh, Skull like Mandalorian style kind of get up like. It kind of on like his, it's kind of on his own. As far as as far as who the character is, you know what I mean. Like uh, later okay. on, like they get him. In, you know, it's just uh, more of something to, to further along the stories of like Captain America and like uh, more like the Avengers stuff. So who is okay? So Taskmaster, of course, is a villain. Who is who is Taskmaster's main arch enemy? Is it Captain America? Is it Black Widow in the comics or? No, I, I, it was, I'd say probably more Captain America. Uh, there's uh, definitely not a whole lot of Black Widow, but then again, I wasn't really reading those. Okay. So I don't know too too much about that part of it because those are it's kind of not part of the Golden Age. Okay, well, I mean, Taskmaster's come is I know a little bit, not as much as you do. I'm like, oh, okay, this Taskmaster's kind of badass. Why Taskmaster Taskmaster is after Black Widows because she got a, a black mini uh, briefcase in the mail from her sister, who sent her this red mist. And this red mist, if you get it thrown in your face, it well, it wipes away the mind control, so you now can think for yourself. We'll go back to where her sister was on a mission. Her sister's brutal, dude. We got a we got a chick running away with this fucking red mist, and then Black Widow's sister comes in, has a little knife fight, stabs her, twists the knife, guts her. Yeah, I mean he's she straight guts her. Yeah, that was. Uh, I'm just like, oh, pretty savage. And then all of a sudden she got the red mist, and she's like, oh my god, what have I done? And I'm going to give this red mist to Natasha, to you know say, hey, let's get together. Um. What do you think so far up to the Taskmaster? Task, I can't say this. Taskmaster. Taskmaster. I can't say it. Can't do it tonight. It's one of those nights. Uh, I thought the bridge fight was actually really good with Taskmaster. Thought it was fun. I will never, you will never, ever hear me ding the action in this movie. This movie is on par with its action as Winter Soldier. Captain America Winter Soldier. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, this, this action is amazing. Great, great action. Yeah, I I was real happy with uh, a lot of the action too. Again, Taskmaster coming out early and in them utilizing her uh, throughout the rest of the movie was fantastic. Rather than it being like just some sort of end baddie, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To to like have yeah. this build up and then really not really utilize them, <clears throat> Captain Phasma. And it's <laughs> great that Taskmaster comes out. Sword swinging, guns blazing, arrows shooting, 
you know, shield throwing. It, it was really cool. Um, it was really cool to, yeah. to, to see Taskmaster in action too. And again, I want to see a, a lot more of when we will, because we are seeing the introduction to a lot of these new characters that are kind of like on that line, you know, like they're not completely bad, but they're also not like completely good. They're kind of just off in their own chaotic neutral. You know what I mean? Like they are in their own endeavors, like Punisher, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. like they have their own mission of what they're doing and they know that they have a super uh, uh, power or whatever the hell it's, you know, Marvel and they're going to go about doing it, whether you like it or not. And they don't, you know, report to anybody. They just do their own thing. Right. And then we get, uh, and then we get Black Widow going to what, Budapest or whatever, Morocco. I don't Budapest. know where she went. Budapest. And she meets with her sister, and they have a standoff, they have a fight, but then boom, other Black Widows show up, and we get a fight. Great action again, all the way through. Uh, cannot complain about the action in this part. But let's talk about the plot points to where uh, her and her sister. You you missed uh, the part where they broke their dad out of out of prison. They broke Alexi out of prison. Which no, I was they gonna needed get to that part. Oh well, ex- excuse me, sir. Yeah, I was gonna, I mean, like, I mean, like, I mean, the sisters pretty much are like, "Hey, we got to get Alexia, you know, Hopper from Dad? Stranger Things. We got to get Dad out of prison." Okay, so now this is when the movie changes for me. The uh, Red Guardian is an absolute treat. I thoroughly enjoy every time that Red Guardian is on screen. He is a delight. Yeah, I, I I just absolutely love him. I love how we haven't seen him since the airplane in Cuba incident, and then boom, an hour in the movie, he's in a a frozen prison. Why not? And he's beating every single guy in an arm wrestling contest, and the biggest baddest guy comes in, and he plays with him, and he breaks his wrist, like just absolutely fun, and the prison break scene, ridiculous, but fun. I, I love how they break him out of prison. Uh, really enjoy this part. What about you? Oh yeah, I, he did. David Harbour did a fantastic job. Red Guardian is is a great character. Just kind of like that 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 big, lovable kind of person, you know. And it's is that great who that he is he's in the comics. Sorry. Uh, no, no, not really. I, I'm in the comics. I'm pretty sure he's married to Natasha Romanoff. <laughs> Oh, no shit, really? Yeah, I'm quite sure he is. And uh, he's just another super soldier for, for hire. After a while, all the countries have their own little super soldiers. Captain Britain is somewhere in there, too, which I'm sure we'll get to see. Henry Cavill, maybe? You know, it, it'll it come out. Although I, I would imagine... Oh, well, no, they were going to get Captain Britain in What If? Well, that'll be interesting to see. In the, so... in the Marvel series What If, if you wanted to see that. I'm pretty sure I, I saw that advertised... So, as a okay, lady so too. For, okay, so for somebody who doesn't know anything about Red Guardian, I think we made this clear in our Loki show. I know, do we want to say first gen? You know what I mean? A la Pokemon kind of thing? Like anything in second gen or more, I don't know. So like, 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 like Red Guardian, I don't know a damn thing about. So, but he doesn't have a shield. So is he just... Russia's Captain America without a shield. Is that who Red Guardian yeah, is? Yeah, he's a fucking Zangief on, you know, Super Zangief. Okay, so my issue with that, then, let's just go with this movie, right? Let's just let's just fuck the comics, for example, right? Let's just forget about it. So this yeah. guy's the Red Guardian, right? Meaning that the Russian government uses him as their Captain America a la Red Guardian. People know him probably, presumably, as the Red Guardian, why would you have him go undercover with a fake wife and two fake little girls for three years? Why would they do that? Keep the peace, man. Do it do this quietly rather than it just going there. But as an, as an act of that. war, what's that? But yeah, but Captain America wouldn't have done that. Captain America was frozen. Is he frozen because of what happened at the end of Endgame? He was Is frozen. He frozen at, still? He's frozen at this time, and the, the whatever happened in Endgame, that's him laying low. If you want to cross your your time streams on that one, 
Okay. Well, yeah, he should so, be he should be frozen at this point. Okay, so Captain America is frozen at this point. Russia has Red Guardian. When and, when they go, you're talking about when it's it's in the 90s, right? 90s Ohio. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's like it's like if you have if you're Russia and you have your own Captain America, so to speak. Why have him be undercover in Ohio with a fake family? It doesn't make sense. Why would He's, they do? I, I would imagine I'm not a Russian, or I didn't also deploy Red Guardian too. I'd imagine maybe you know go out here do this because your wife is is the the architect. Your wife is the mastermind who's able to do a lot more. You are the muscle. You're going in undercover as this, probably under her order or in her direction or, or whatever the hell. And your muscle is the backup, you know, or or that extra aid in the in your covert in this. So you can just kind of like, you know, break through a door or something like that because you're super strong. But you, you so know what I mean? You, you don't want to show your cards, Jordan. Come on, man. Well, I'm just saying, OK, OK, so he's not. You Captain don't know how to be a spy. God damn has... it, man. Hold it. Hold it down. Well, I'm just trying to figure out. Why would they do this? So, okay, so pretty much Red Guardian is just your dumb Captain America. I mean, like, he doesn't have the intelligence or the pizzazz. He just, he's just the muscle. The fake wife is the pizzazz and everything. What were they stealing, by the way, in the, in Ohio? A what disc, were they stealing right? for like super floppy? soldier stuff? Was it super soldier stuff? I It could have been that. I'm actually not. I might need to take a walk at, or take a watch again because I can't really quite remember right now. It was for something right. thing for uh, for Drekoff, right? I'm assuming so because also if we go off of Civil War's timeline as well, isn't this just a few years after or right around the time where Winter Soldier killed Tony Stark's parents? It, what so that's when? going on? Well, Possibly no, I'm because the beginning of Civil War. We see the assassination of the parents, and it's like like ninety three, ninety four. Yes, that's right. Of of, so, of T'Challa or T'Chaka. Of no, no, no. Of Iron Man's parents. Oh, jeez, come on, man. What? Oh, I'm I'm just getting thrown around through this timeline here. We're supposed to be talking about. Well, I'm just I'm just trying to figure out where we are before we 100 percent go off of the prison break. Is in Ohio in ninety five, ninety six. The Russians send Red Guardian with a fake wife and a fake family to live in a nice house in suburban Ohio to take a floppy disk with information about super soldiers. But if I remember from Civil War and I haven't seen it for a long time, I thought Tony Stark's parents were killed by Winter Soldier in 91, 93. So I'm just curious on like, like I mean, like that has already happened. Okay, they know yes. what's going on, right? With like, I mean, I mean, like, my question is: the Russians know that Tony Stark's parents have been killed at this point. I'm assuming. I mean, like, this, this is, is a lot of like, this is Shield intel. I'm looking it up just because you're you're really breaking your head here, just going uh, thinking about. I'm just this. trying to figure it out. Yeah, they don't know. They are. They obviously already have super soldiers, Jordan, because Red Guardian is one. So why would they need to steal more? And then they made a, a Bucky as well too. This is. He was going to Shield and found information from Shield. That's what he took. That's where he's going to Cuba with, or what he's going to Cuba with. Okay, so information about Super Soldier stuff, maybe. It's it's probably more than that because Shield didn't do Super Soldier stuff. Yeah, they did. They created Captain America. Uh, sure. Right. I thought that was. I didn't think that was Shield. I thought that was Shield. I could be With wrong what? here too. Okay. All right. All right. Prison breakout scene in this movie. Great, great action again. Can't go wrong with it. Uh, Scarlett Johansson flying through on a rope, picking up, uh, you know, the Red Guardian. Great. It's awesome. And we get a nice little joke where it's like, hey, we're going to run out of gas. And it's like, it'll be fine. And then they crash land. That was funny. Um, and then they walk up to the compound of the mother and we get a family reunion and we know that none of these people are related. Um, the red room, if you will, or Drago Dragoff, 
we find out, put all these people together, or maybe the Russian government, to spy. We also find out as well that Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow uh, murdered uh, Draco's uh, daughter instead yep. of him. Uh, so she has been dealing with that uh, issue at this point in time. We get a lot of laughs of Red Guardian because he's fat, trying to put on his suit. Ha, ha, ha. Just knee slapping funny. Um, but then all of a sudden, bullshit ensues to where we get, you know, the Taskmaster master and all the goons coming in to steal the family and take them to the Red Room. And uh, the mom, Rachel Wise, betrayed them. Right? Uh, yep. That sounds about. Wait. Wh- what? What do, you, what do you. She didn't betray them. Well, at this point, she did. Uh, she was taken away. Right. No, right. I mean, like, she was dressed up in all black, Rachel Wise. Taskmaster comes in and everybody, hey, hey, we got, we got to go to the red room and everybody's knocked out. But then we get put into prison cells. Uh, the sister of Black Widow is going to get a lobotomy, I'm assuming. Red Guardian and Scarlett Johansson are in these cells. And then, of course, walking free is Rachel Wise. Trick, she meets the head, right, Draco? Yeah. And... And we get a Mission Impossible moment. It was actually Scott Johansson the entire time. Yeah, so we originally thought that she was backstabbing them when then we got the face swap. Eric. You so you threw sure. me there for a moment there because I was like, right. did you watch this movie, Jordan? No, of course I did. So, Eric, this is where I'm going to show my hand. When the face swap happened, I knew I was bought. Uh, the, the, here's my credit card. Swipe it as many times as you want. Eric, I like this movie. Eric, I'm going to tell you because of this part and for the rest of the movie, even before then, uh, this movie is probably on par with Winter Soldier. I mean, in, in, in my opinion, Winter Soldier is the best. Okay. I mean, this, this movie is good. Very, very good. This was not what I was sold. I was sold a stupid, fat, red Captain America. I was told shenanigans. I was told bullshit from the trailers. Sure. I mean, I was not look. And then all of a sudden I get into this movie and it's quote unquote family drama. It is a drama, drama, drama. It is Scarlett Johansson hiding, not de- trying to deal with the, with the issues that she's created. Uh, this is a very, very dark movie. Very dark. And I am bought hook, line, and sinker. I, this movie cannot do anything wrong at this point. This movie's great. Well, I enjoyed the movie, but at the same part, at, right around this time, too, is when they're in the Red Room, the floating castle in the sky, is actually where I started to eye roll a bit more, just because it started to just get more and more ridiculous. This is, again, just a spy. These are just normal spies, not super soldiers, not anything else. So they get into this castle in the sky, and um, again, the entire time this is happening, there's great banter between everybody. Like they they're able to do these jokes. Um, the interaction between Natasha and uh, y- y- what's her name, Elena, mm-hmm. uh, about uh, the the superhero kind of how she how she does her little move, her pose when she does superhero landing, and then I love that, it. That it's re- re- yeah, it's cute. I I liked it. It was great. Um, but again, this part in the sky when they start adding kind of these rules where none of the widows can kill Drekoff because of a pheromone blocker, and then Nat- yeah. and then Natasha basically bashes in her fucking skull. Yeah, it's a dollar senses in order to kill the thing. The That's widows great. come in. No, I I get that. But then this this thing, this air base is now falling from the sky, and these widows what fall with style. To the ground, everyone does this. We don't know anything about it. I mean, like look. They, there's there's a plane that is able to, for some reason, these getaway planes and helicopters just are able to just kind of chill and wait, and everyone's just getting on, and and it's no problem. And Every movie, Eric, deserves a mulligan. 
no matter where that mulligan is in the movie. Because it's a movie. You're supposed to be entertained. I so, get that. But do you know what I mean? Like that, We're at a point yeah, right now. Moment, hold on. Though. We're at a point right now of this movie where I already know what's going to happen. So I just sure. want you to just wrap it up. Okay? Because everything else is extra. All this extra, uh, this flying, the way that Milena Rachel Weiss is able to nosedive this plane. Oh, no. Hold on. It's like, oh, really? I hope they don't pull up. At the, and they pull up right before they hit the ground. It's yeah, all cliche, been done before, sure. yes, and we don't, we really don't need it. But again, we get the uh, even more cliche where there's the crash site on the ground, there's the debris on fire everywhere, right. and everyone's just walking, you know, arm over their their gut, just going, "Oh, is everyone okay?" And everyone's like, "Yeah, we're okay." Well, you know, and then they're one-liners as they walk into the sunset. It was just, I wasn't like over it. It was just kind of like, okay, well, what, what next? Give me, what? give me, give me the next bit. Give me the, give me the after credits now. I've already, I've already finished my meal. I want some dessert. A great, great metaphor. I mean, but one of the things I guess that got me really excited about this movie was because, again, this is not what I was sold. This is not what I was promised. I was promised something stupid, Eric. I was promised something that was not this at all. I was promised Red Sparrow, and I did not want to see Red no Sparrow. No way, dude! Again. You were not promised that. Yeah, so, watch how trailer. how can you how can you with anything that with a Marvel stamp on it not expect anything else? I well, I mean, Marvel has had some stinkers before in the past. I mean, and, and uh, Incredible Hulk will ring a bell. Iron Man three will but, ring a bell. But still, you're not getting like. Marvel presents Maury and me, you know, like no. you're, <laughs> you're getting an action movie. You're getting, a, it's a comic book movie the entire time, Jordan. Damn. Right. But it's good. It's good because it, it's, it's doing something that I, I mean, again, I, I was not expecting people for years, even after Iron Man two were like, we get a black widow movie. I'm like, no, I do not want a black widow movie. Do not give me a black widow movie. And then they're like, guess what? Black widow's coming out. And it's like, Oh God. But Damn again, it. this was just – this movie like this did a good job of just introducing new people into the world. We got, again, Red Guardian, who's most assuredly going to come back. We got uh, Yelena, who's also very much going to come back. That was confirmed, and we'll talk about the uh, the end credit a little bit later here too. Right. Um, Secretary Ross made it another movie. He's another mm -hmm. reoccurring character that we've seen in other movies before. I'm really hoping that we see more Hulk. That would be really cool, Secretary Ross. Um, and again, Taskmaster is a great movie. Uh, bad person, bad guy to have. Uh, it's I, I really like them in uh, in this, and I, I don't know if they're gonna get into the, the of like their recruitment into like the Secret Avengers or like the Frightful Four, um, or if Shield's just gonna do their own thing. So these are all like Taskmaster, you know, and uh, and all the other like uh, U.S. agent. You know what I mean? Like we'll talk about that too. But they're right. said they're setting up for it and. I, I'm excited to see who else they're going to add. Well, I mean, with that, though, how about this? This is not a Black Widow movie. It's called Black Widow, but the star of the movie is her sister. That's who we're supposed to fall in love with. The beginning, oh, yeah. the introduction of her is her gutting a woman, and then all of a sudden we get her making fun of Scarlett Johansson in her superhero pose, and now we're supposed to like her. And I do. I think her sister is absolutely charming in this. I think her sister is 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 not only just a beautiful woman, just a great actress. Uh, I really enjoyed her in this. Um, I didn't think I would. I think my excitement is I watched this on a Sunday. We're recording on a Monday here for the fans, so I'm only 24 hours into it, and I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I did not think I would. I was my arms were folded as soon as I pressed play. Like, I do not want to see this. And I'm walking out of this, possibly saying that this is the second or third best in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like, I mean, like, number like one for me. like that much, huh? Oh, I absolutely like that much because this is not at all what I was thinking. Because when you and I were arguing a second ago, I saw the trailers pre-COVID, and it was Taskmaster was a, was a jokester. It, 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 not like it was in this movie. Like, it, th th this... The original trailers 
were presenting a different movie. I was not coming into this expecting a drama. I was not coming to this expecting a Winter Soldier. I was coming into this expecting a Civil War or an Iron Man 3. Just slapstick bullshit. Okay. And I was completely blown away that I had drama. I had passion. I had feeling. Like, I was absolutely blown away by it. I thoroughly enjoyed it all the way through. Couldn't believe it. Uh, of course, the ending, you know, Scar Johansson, you know, gets captured again. And she gets her blonde, short hair, and she's going to get a plane by Q. I'm going to call him Q uh, to go and bust Captain America and people out of prison in Hawkeye to set up, you know, for Infinity War. Infinity War happens. Endgame happens. Credits roll. End credits. Uh, we get her sister coming to look at her grave, Natasha Romanoff. And then there's Julia, Julia Reefer, R- R- I can't say her name. Dreyfus. Julia Louis Dreyfus. Thank you. And she was in Falcon Winter Soldier, and she's like, hey, you know, I got the guy who killed your sister. <laughs> it's a picture of Hawkeye on an iPad. Clearly, he did not kill her sister. We know this. We've seen it. So clearly, Dreyfus is a bad guy. 100%. Uh, yes. I mean, right? I mean, we know that Hawkeye did not kill Scarlett Johansson. We know this. Oh, well, yeah, of course. But here's the thing is that uh, uh, Val, I guess we'll call her because I'm not going to say her name. Contessa Valentina Allegro de Fontaine. Jesus Um, Christ. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But we'll just call call her Val. She was introduced to Falcon Warrior Soldier. I thought she was in something else. Maybe. Maybe as an end stinger. I haven't seen her before Winter Soldier, but I'm sure she was uh, involved she's Black before. Widow, either way. Um, anything that they're... That, I'm reading up about the, the MCU. Uh, she's actually very secondary. She wasn't very much in, much in the comics. I don't really know her from the comics at all. I, I um, Maybe know her in passing. But no, she's, she's commissioned to basically make a government version of of Avengers. That's that's a common theme in all comics that you'll see, at least in DC and Marvel, is government interference. That's what the original Civil War comic series was all about. It wasn't really... I mean, it did have the rift between the superheroes for sure, but it's because some were on the payroll of, of the government payroll and others chose to be independent. They're just like, no, 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 we're going to do our own thing because that was the plan of it. Whereas the government's just like, well, we'll cover you and your family you know, you know what I mean? Like, you guys are superheroes. Let us help you out. You don't need to be secret identities anymore and do this double life. We can just, we can just employ you. And that's really what, what again, Civil War was about. So this is what that is. Val is going around and recruiting different members. She already got U.S. agent at the end of Falcon Winter Soldier. And I'd imagine that Taskmaster is probably not going to be too far behind as well. And now she's recruiting uh, Yelena to to take out Hawkeye. So she's the evil Nick. So so she's the evil Nick Fury. Yes, she's she is the she is the Nick Fury of whoever her employer will be, which I'm sure we'll we'll find out later. I'm a sh- I'm assuming it's going to be Shield. It it's probably going to be Shield or. Um, Oh, who is that chick that we saw in Falcon Winter Soldier? Ah, uh, the red hair one. She's uh she was the the friend that kind of hooked up, who later found out to be, uh, the the, the stockmaster or whatever. Who ended up, you know, being the baddie at the end when she was actually fronting as a good guy, as Captain America's friend. She was in Winter Soldier. She was in Captain America. She was the the blonde. Oh yeah. Uh... Agent Carter's daughter. Yes. Whatever her name is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm sure she'll come back there too, and, and have like there's a lot of characters that are going to be introduced into this, and we still have so many movies more to, to come. We do. Well, let's get into our popcorn ratings. I'm excited to, to, to share mine, so I'll just go first. I have this one, Eric. Um, I feel in this movie, a uh, medium bag is a cop out. I actually really do think this movie is a large. I think this is not only the second or maybe third best in the whole MCU. Like, I was completely blown away and completely shocked. I will come back and watch this movie 
uh, again and again. I, I was blown away. Could not believe it. I, I loved the opening um, of Family Ohio sequence. Um, I loved Red Guardian. Taskmaster was amazing. Um, this movie, to me, was not about Scarlett Johansson. This movie's called Black Widow, but I think it's about her sister, who is the Black Widow that's going to take the reins. Because they all know the fate of Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow. Um, I love the family drama. Like I said just a few minutes ago, uh, the trailers did not present this kind of movie to me. I was expecting something really stupid, something Iron Man 3-ish. And I was not into going to see it. Uh, but I'm glad I did. Uh, I, I, I don't think this is um, an MCU movie that you should not see. This is an MCU, MCU movie that is very good. I think it's very well made. I think the action is just on par, the same ballpark, the same league, the same sport as Captain America Winter Soldier, which I feel has the best action in all of MCU. Um, I was really afraid of this movie because of Scarlett Johansson. I didn't know if she could carry a movie by herself. She never really has. She has before in some movies that have not been really well, like Lucy comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Um, But... I was completely blown away by this. I think this is a movie that's really, really good. It, that this movie is really good uh, for what it is. This is not an Oscar film. I don't think this movie should be in the movie guys' awards as best film of the year. I don't think that at all. Uh, but for what it is, for being MCU, I think this is a very good movie for what we got. Uh, I was I was impressed. I was blown away. So yeah, large bag for me. I think everybody who's a fan should check out Black Widow. Eric, what do you say? Um, you know I I don't want to. Is it like a medium and a half? I can I can do <laughs> <laughs> it, because like I I I really did enjoy this movie. I I really did. I just don't like Black Widow. <laughs> but everyone else, I really enjoyed. I, I Rachel Weiss coming out surprised me. And right. and I love you, Rachel. If you, I know she's a fan of the show. Uh, and she's welcome on anytime. We'd love to have you on here, Rachel. And I think she did a wonderful job. It was a pleasant surprise to see her. Just like, oh, okay. You know what? Is You know what I mean? Where I'm already buckled in, but now I'm adjusting the seat. You know, I'm ready to go. Uh, David Harper did a fantastic job as Red Guardian. They were talking because he became the fan favorite already first week about doing Red Guardian's own series. And I believe that they're going to follow up on that. He might get his own series next year or, or so. A nice little uh, a nice little six-parter. So I we'll, hope we'll, they do. Yeah, so we'll see about that. Um, which, I again, that would be something I would watch. That would be a good way to introduce maybe some older characters too or some newer characters or however they want to do it. Uh, bring Rachel Weiss back in the game too. That was fantastic. Um, yeah, uh, I think uh, Florence Pugh did a fantastic job uh, yeah. as as Valenda. I I really believed all part of it, and I just enjoyed. You're right, Jordan. I enjoyed watching her a lot more than I did watching Scarlett Johansson. I'm not saying that I didn't like Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow. Again, I'm just saying I don't like the character. But yeah, but again, we're here with a very robust world for. Um, for Black Widow, a lot of callbacks to the inside jokes of her and Hawkeye at Budapest, and we got to actually see a follow up of what that was in their little hideout, just like in Budapest, right? Right. right. And so a, a lot of good Marvel humor in here as well. It just it just worked. Like honestly, it was all parts of it just just worked. Taskmaster was awesome. That's that's uh, it wasn't what I expecting, but I was not disappointed. Like it, it was a silent character that's cool um, with the sword and shield that's great. We got to see her uh, do some some grappling and then like swing in, which is a is a signature move for Taskmaster. The first fight on that bridge when you got to see Taskmaster copy the the leg move, mm-hmm. uh, you know the signature Black Widow leg move where she puts her legs around your neck and then does a body twist to flip you over. And then Taskmaster right. responded by doing the same thing. Awesome. I, I like that. And then we get to see glints of the other Avengers in Taskmaster 2. Um, I, I believe there was some callbacks to Captain America, the shield kick, and, you know, and kind of a few other things in there as well, too. And I, I, it was just great. The character was great. 
I liked the end credits scene. Uh, uh, Drekoff was kind of a shitty villain for me. The whole Red Room thing was kind of uh, silly for me, too. I, I didn't sure. really much care care for that. The action was on point, like I said. I'm not going to disagree with that. Um, it didn't put me to sleep at all. So I enjoyed it, but I don't know. Maybe I can't find anything to, like, you know what I mean, to, to, to make it, to say anything bad about it. Other than it just, it was just of disinterest. Other than it was just not the character for me that I wanted to know about, you know. But I feel like I'm so invested into this that anything that I miss, any movie or series that I miss, is going to be detrimental to the story later on. But see, Eric, this is where I think that they did it right behind the scenes. They went into this knowing that we know what happened to Black Widow. They went into this knowing it was going to get a prequel. This movie, in, in my opinion, is a, is, is a eulogy to Black Widow because we're not here for her. The, the movie may be called Black Widow, but we find ourselves to be charmed, amused, and having fun with all these other characters. And Scott Johansson is just in the background. This I movie's hear you. called Black Willow, Black Widow, and she's... <laughs> She's Willow. She's not even like no, in the foreground. Now that's a movie. Can we bring Black, w- Black Willow? Willow? That would that's be- nice. <laughs> this is all night, folks. We just can't speak right tonight. But I mean, like, that's where I think this movie actually, Eric, is is doing great. Is that it's getting us because we know we are done with Black Widow. Did her death in Endgame affect you? It didn't affect me. I don't know if it affected anybody else. Did it affect you? I don't know. But these characters in this movie are just so spot on that I want to continue this espionage Russian spy world because of everybody else, which I would argue to end my rant is very fucking rare in an ensemble piece. You know, you want to see your main star spearheaded. You don't want to see all the other characters outshadowing your star. And in this case, they did. And that actually is a good thing for this movie. Sure. I, mean, I think this movie is what Captain Marvel wanted to be. Absolutely. They, they, yes. Marvel seems to do that where they seem to have a movie. And then they learn. I props to them. They seem to learn from the movie. They seem to listen to the audience to know what what worked, what didn't work, and they seem to make adjustments to it because it again, it really seemed like they did a, a really good job in this movie. There was just a lot of, you know, uh, uh, people were were itching for some uh, a more lady kick ass movies, and they felt like Captain Marvel wasn't done well enough because of Brie Larson's. Or how, wherever she did Captain Marvel, and again, I'm not going to go on the Twitterverse and, and try to find the arguments here, but I liked everyone involved in this movie. Again, the the yeah. banter and and how all four of these actors worked with each other was just was just lovely to see. I would watch a series of this. I would watch another yes. movie of this. Shit. Well, if I'm saying that, then I guess I'll have to go with the large bag too. Like I'm I'm interested in it. You know, it worked because just like you said, Black Widow wasn't the main character everyone else was it worked as an ensemble and for that it just made it just made a good movie it was enjoyable yes it was so i'm giving this a large bag for the record eric have you switched to a large bag or you're gonna stick with your i'll have to body? because I'm, I'm struggling to find something bad about this movie other than just saying that you know no i didn't like it i'm not gonna be a toddler with my arms crossed in the corner here no it was it was more enjoyable than anything it really was and I think I'm excited because this year of 2021 has been a lot of dreck for Movie Guys podcast. The most dreck, I think, in the history of Movie Guys podcast. Could I don't be, remember us reviewing as right. much dreck. Could, could this it be is bad. also that we're maybe uh, uh, writing kind of a Marvel high right now because Marvel, it does seem like they, Phase 4 is, is starting to pick up some steam here. Maybe because, I mean, like we can go back on record to all the fans listening to other shows. I have not liked anything Marvel has given us this year. I, I mean, like, I was lukewarm on WandaVision. I completely despise Falcon and Winter Soldier. And I was I was lukewarm with Loki and, until he changed my mind with, you know, Kang the Conqueror. And I was like, okay, I see what they're doing now because I didn't know at the time. 
But I mean, yeah. like I was very, I mean, on average, I was lukewarm to what Marvel was giving us, which I haven't been before. So as, like, as long as you're paying I, attention, you know, I think that's all yeah. they want right now. And it's like, do you just, just hold on, baby. We'll, 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 we'll get you there. I mean, like, I mean, this year has been dreck. It's, it's been, it's been a bad first six months, seven months of the year, but that's I think okay, we're going to end the year with some good shit. Yeah. I'm excited. It's uh, it always rains before the sun shines, Jordan. And I, and I feel real good about the movies we got coming up for the rest of the year. I do too. It always is darkest. It's so, but the day is always dark for the dawn. You got dark it. night reference. There we go. Anyway, thank you so much everybody for listening to us. Like always make sure to check us out on movieguyspodcast.podbean.com. That is our main site. You can check out all of our archives on there from the past six years. I can't believe we've done it for six years. I'm excited for six more. But check us out at movieguyspodcast.podby.com on every social media you can think of and also wherever you get your podcast from. However you're listening to this episode now, we are on every social media and also podcast network platform for you to get your podcast needs. Eric, thank you so much for joining me, and we'll be back next week for another awesome episode. Have a good night.